How many of you would have heard about second brain? Maybe once in a while, but did you ever think what exactly is a second brain? The whole idea revolves around the fact that you have your brain, right? Your brain is to process the information, not to store the information. So you need an alternative system so that you can store all the information so that you'll have enough space in your mind to actually process the information. That's exactly what second brain is all about. So now let's dig a little deeper into what exactly comprises of the second brain. So how can we maintain an effective second brain? Without any further ado, let's get into the topic. Hello everyone, this is Kapil Reddy, founder and CEO of Superly. Today, as I told, I'll talk about this quote framework and para framework, which are all associated with the second brain concept. More than ever, given this era of information overload, we need to have certain systems in place to make sure we are not overburdened with all information and we are not having anxiety looking at all the information around us. So we should be able to separate the signal from noise. And that's exactly what second brain can actually help you with. That's just a fancy term for like a, maybe a digital space which you have on the web. Just for our purpose, why not use it as a second brain concept? So the important thing about second brain is a framework called code. Code stands for collect, organize, distill, express. So I just explain briefly about what exactly you mean by each of it. So collect, I think name itself suggests, right? So we collect a lot of information from the web, on the go, or wherever it can be, because that's how you are in the constant mode of learning. But at the same time, it's not very effective. So first step, what you want to do is, let's say you found an interesting article or you came across an interesting screenshot, just collect everything and make sure you have a place where you can capture all those resources that you have collected over time into a digital space. So that's the first step of collect. Second step is organize. This is probably the most important step because again, as the name suggests, organize is nothing but now that you've collected hordes of information, how can you make sense out of it? So how can you organize in such a way that you can actually quickly go back to that particular topic whenever you require or whenever you want to learn about it. And another important thing is now that you've organized everything, so whenever you want to revisit a topic which you've learned in the past, that's something you can easily do when you organize everything. So in organizing, there is another framework which is very effective called Para Framework. So Para stands for Projects, Areas, Resources, Archives. So projects, as I told, it's nothing but a topic which you want to learn about. For example, let's say, uh, let's take it in the Zupoli context. So Zupoli is all about your learning, right? So why not understand that a uh, project or let's call it a learning. Let's say you want to learn about digital marketing or Web3 or crypto. So now that you've collected a lot of resources, first you have to link every resource into a project or this learning which you have created so that the information doesn't seem like scattered everywhere, but it's all organized into a single space. That's the big advantage of the projects part where you're just organizing everything. So next comes the activity. So let's say there is a specific activity. Maybe you've created several learnings, but out of it, there might be a specific activity you have. For example, attending an interview or cracking that job, uh, the dream job of yours or writing a competitive exam, whatever it can be, anything and everything. Just try to understand what is the activity. And another thing is these are activities which probably will travel with you for a longer time. For example, let's say you're a marketer. So you need to constantly upskill in marketing, right? So it's not like one day you learn something and just stop in there. You have to constantly keep upskilling. So that's why you can call this an activity that you're maintaining for a long time. So in this way, first, now that you've organized all your content, so you have your projects from that, you're picking up the activities which you want to retain for a longer time. So that's about activities. Next is the resources. So resources, as I told, let's say, for example, you're actively learning something, but doesn't mean you will not come across some other resources, right? So maybe you have another uh, learning topics, but you're not actively learning it, yet you found some useful information about it. So why not put it under resources? So that whenever you come back to that learning, you can always put, pull back that information. So in this way, you're constantly piling up information for yourself, which you can use it for a later time. That is all about the resources part. The last step is the archives part. So this is where it gets crucial because it's human tendency that if you're overwhelmed with all the information around, there's nothing much you can do. And that's why you see a lot of people procrastinating because there's just too much, right? So you just don't know where to start or what to see. For that reason, there's a good practice for you to archive things which you think are no longer relevant to you. Let's say, for example, you were interested in crypto, you collected a lot of information, but after reading some stuff, you felt probably this is not something you enjoy reading. So rather than just keeping them, just put it under archives. So at any point later, if you really want to get back, that's when you can pull back from the archives. Or another effective thing is just completely deleting it or just set up a system where things get auto deleted. 
so that you're not in that FOMO of, okay, why, what if I lose this information? So that won't happen. So that is all about the para framework. Now coming to the distill part in the code framework. So distill is nothing but now that you've collected all the resources, you have uh, set your uh, learnings or something. So what is that you're learning out of it? So the distilling can happen by summarizing everything. Progressive summarization is something which I think I've spoken in the previous video, which is very important for you so that you don't have to go back to the same resource and read all the information. All you got to do is just go back to the summaries. And that's exactly what Zooperly helps you with, where you've collected all your resources, but on the left side of the platform, you can have all your summary blocks written. So that whenever you come back on that particular learning, you don't have to go through all the resources because it's not like, uh, you know, read some article and everything in the article is something which is valuable to you. There are maybe bits and pieces that are valuable to you. So why not summarize them so that whenever you really want to learn about it, you can just come back to the summarization part. So now the final step is express. So yeah, I think I've told enough times, right? The moment you teach somebody about a particular topic that you've learned, that's probably the real learning and that's the most effective learning. So this express step exactly does that. So let's say you've learned about something. So why not teach it to somebody? maybe in the form of a YouTube video, or you can start a podcast, you can take a webinar or whatever it is, but make sure you take this step so that you're expressing what you've learned. Because in this way, first, as I told you, have collected information and the brain connects all the dots. So you're forming your own opinion. So it's not like you have to copy somebody's opinion. You have your own thought process and framework, right? So why not express it to the wider audience? So in this way, whenever you're learning something, there is a lot more structure to the way you learn. Because of it, you don't get overwhelmed all the time and you don't feel that, okay, you're losing something or you won't feel less confident. By following this method, you can be much more confident and that's something which will help you unlock your knowledge potential. So the whole idea right now is to maintain this personal knowledge. So for that to happen, you need to have a system. Now coming to the big question, how do I do it? Yes, there are multiple apps solving for each of the steps. So, but why not have one single app that can actually help you with everything which I spoke right, right now. And that's exactly what Zootoli can help you with. And the good news is we are launching a campaign called Freedom to Learn. Freedom to Learn is nothing but just your ability to learn anything and everything. Considering the 75th independence of our incredible nation, we are opening up access to Zupali for 24 hours on 15th of August, where anybody who signs up can get access to Zupali instantly. So do grab your opportunity and what all I've spoken until now would actually make sense to you once you check the platform yourself. And yes, we are still in the beginning stage, but the kind of feedback we got from our early users has been incredible. And that's something which has been pushing us to stretch our limits and we couldn't be more excited for all of you to try it out. So I'll again do more videos about how exactly you can use Zupali more effectively. But for now, just mark your date, set your reminder on August 15th to sign up and access Zupali. Happy learning and I hope you all have a great weekend ahead and a great next week. So until then, please do like, subscribe and comment on this video. And most importantly, as I told, we have limited awareness around these topics and please help us in spreading the knowledge by sharing it in your network. That'll be quite helpful for us. So thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Signing off.